Right now, Washington mornings on the mall. At AM 630. 637 on WMAL, the place where Washington comes to talk. I'm Brian Wilson. He's Brian Neiman. We're joined on the line now by our friend and well-known Democrat, Lanny Davis. Now, Lanny, my good friend, good morning. Every time you come on, you are anxious to talk about Mitt Romney strapping his dog to the roof of his his station wagon and going on vacation. You think this is the greatest crime against humanity, uh, I don't know, perhaps since uh, you know World War II. Let, let, but let me just say, we it learned shows a, yesterday... It shows a heartless uh, human being, well, that's, that's for sure. How heartless is it then, of course, to, to take man's best friend God, the dog, and he, eat him? The dog had diarrhea. He hosed him down and kept driving. Okay, okay, okay. But, I mean, how, but that, that pales in comparison to a man who would eat man's best friend. Did you say man at the age of seven? Do you think uh, Indonesia has different ages of puberty? Oh, <laughs> he was seven years old. How oh, come on? Are we really, are he we really ate a dog. To compare a seven-year-old having meat and later identifying it is, I think it's horrible, but for a seven-year-old, is that what we're doing here? Is that the... Is that the comparison? This is a grown yes. man. I, look, are, are you suggesting, sick. Lanny, that what I'm saying here is... Re- and hoses him down. But are you suggesting... The television said the dog liked it. It is. Hold the, on, dog, hold on. the dog did like it. Are you suggesting that what I am saying about the President of the United States is ridiculous? Are you suggesting that? <laughs> when he was seven years old, Well, yes, to somebody, you are. You're saying adult, it's ridiculous. I would be offended. I would counter to you that the silly thing that you keep raising about Mitt Romney putting his dog on the roof of the car is just as ridiculous. He put him in a crate. It was a crate that was designed, and the dog, apparently, according to, to the Romneys, loved it. He loved the fact that his bowels turned to water, and even after that, he hosed him down. Repeat that. Hosed him down, pulled over, and put him back in there for the rest of the You don't tell the whole story. And Romney is on record as saying that the reason the dog had diarrhea problems is because he he took some meat off of a (laughs) counter that he shouldn't have eaten. That's really naughty of the dog. Let's put him. Let's hose him down and put him. Well, what, in there. what are you supposed to do with a dog when he messes all over himself? You take him down and you hose him down. That's what I would do. Would you, do you want him to put him in the front and then, seat? And then you put him back in. Look, let's be serious. There are seventy-seven million dog owners in America, and there are a percentage of them. Let's say it's ten percent, like me, mm-hmm. who think that dogs and and cats a um, cat person too are companion animals. And you treat them almost like you treat your well, children. And in That's fact, exactly in fact, same. Lanny, the well, family the family that stated that, that the reason that they wanted him in like there, child. The, so there are people like me. Let's say it's ten percent of seventy-seven million. This is a serious issue, and they're not going to compare it to a seven-year-old being served what I think is disgusting anywhere in civilization dog meat. Well, yeah, Lanny, with all due respect, as they explain it, and I and I take them at their word because they were there and you weren't. They say that the one. Of the reasons that they wanted to take the dog on vacation is because they did consider him part of the family, right. and they would rather have him along on the trip where he could enjoy time with the family than to put him in a kennel for two weeks. Believe me, they had money. They could have done anything they wanted to do to transport that dog. They thought this was a safe way to take the dog along on vacation so the dog could be part of the family. How about putting him in the car? Well, There's it was no just, room. You got no five room. kids. You got five kids, uh, five man. kids and a wife. Dogs can can snuggle up on people's laps. After a dog gets sick, you put them in the car. Even that part of it, I find offensive. But you know what I find more offensive? Myself. That both President Obama and Mitt Romney refused to endure Simpson balls, and my children and grandchildren are paying for a sixteen trillion dollar debt while they're talking about absolutely silliness. And called the Buffett rule. That's, that's what, what I'm offended. That that was what you call the classic pivot maneuver. Right. Did you see what he just that's did there? Well, hey, my shameless plug well, for the Purple Nation column that I published today, where I again tweak both parties for their hypocrisy, their common hypocrisy. Well, what is the way saying? Wait a second. The real big issue, moral issue of our time, which is our debt. The uh, the Republicans have a budget that's out there, Paul Ryan's budget, that comes a lot closer to getting a balanced budget and to you know stopping the huge debt deficits that we have as compared to what the Democrats have put forward and especially the president's budget. 
Right. Actually, so the, the Ryan budget does not do anything about stopping the deficit. Well, At the end it, of ten years, the deficit actually has grown. It just grows less under Ryan. It does not one penny of a closing tax loopholes. All tax cuts that the underprivileged and the poor will have to take the hit for. He doesn't close one loophole, which is what Simpson Bowles. Why doesn't Ryan endorse Simpson Bowles the way Tom Colburn, not exactly a raging liberal, right. has challenged? Ryan and Romney to do. Why don't they endorse it? Well, they don't, Republicans don't like it because it has tax increases in it. Re- Demi- it closes tax loopholes and raises revenues, and they won't do one dollar, not one dollar, of closing tax loopholes for the wealthy. And I think Obama. But is if you want to talk about being in an, a, if you want not to- endorsing his own commission's recommendations, Dick Durbin from his own state endorsed those recommendations, and Obama, right. who tried to strike a deal with Boehner, I don't understand why he doesn't take the high road and challenge Romney to join him in endorsing an across-the-board approach. But if you want to talk about people who are adults on this issue, the Republicans are much more adult-like when it comes to the budget than Democrats, who have not done anything, Lanny. And the president has and people have laughed at the president's budget. I mean, it's, it's, it's ludicrous. The so, Senate can't come up with a budget either. So, uh, so to me, I, it seems I, like you should be more siding with the no, Republicans no. Than, than the Democrats, because they're actually put forward something that actually comes close to tackling the debt and uh, getting to a balanced budget at least sometime down the road, unlike the Democrats haven't put anything together. And you know that... You know, I, I, I hate to do this because I know it hurts your ratings, but I agree with you. <laughs> 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 I think the Democrats yesterday in the United States Senate should have taken up a uh, courageous proposal. It's courageous because it makes sense, and the Democrats don't want to hear about making sense on uh, Simpson Bowles. Senator Ken Conrad, one of the two liberal senators on the commission, in addition to Senator Durbin from President Obama's home state, Durbin Conrad, Senator Crapo from Idaho, and Senator Coburn from Oklahoma, joined, as well as the Gang of Six and many other Republicans and Democrats were willing to hold hands and say we got to do it across the board. Democrats wouldn't even take that up for a budget and bring a budget up that is a Simpson Bowles budget, and Kent Conrad wanted to do that. He couldn't even get a vote yesterday. All right, Lane, we're out of time. Thanks as always. We'll talk to you again.